Let's begin the first question of AP Physics C Mechanics, and we have electromagnet. Okay, that makes sense. Let's go on. A student wants to determine the value of the acceleration due to gravity G. Another classic question asking us to experimentally figure out the acceleration due to gravity and for a specific location and set up the following experiment. A solid sphere is held vertically a distance H distance h above a pad by electromagnet, as shown in the figure above. The experimental equipment is designed to release the sphere when the electromagnet is turned off. So you're turning this off, and then sphere is going to fall down. Okay, a timer also starts when the electromagnet is turned off, and the timer stops when the sphere lands on the pad. So we're measuring the time it takes for it to hit this pad. Okay. A. While taking the first data point, the student notices that the electromagnet actually releases the sphere after the timer begins. And what's the, what does this mean? This means that the measured time, this means that the measured time is going to be longer than the actual time, than the actual time, because the timer is beginning before the sphere is released. So we are measuring this extra time between when the timer actually starts and when electromagnet actually lets go of the sphere. So we are measuring longer time than we are supposed to. And how is this going to affect the value of G calculated from this experiment? Greater than, less than, or equal to the actual value of G at the student's location? Well, we know. We know that this height we know that this height, the distance traveled, the vertical distance traveled by the sphere should be one half g times delta t squared using one of our equations because the sphere is starting from the rest. So the vertical displacement, so given that bottom is positive, should be one half g t squared. And we know this height is constant for this particular experiment. So this height should be considered a constant. So if delta t is going to increase, so if delta t increases to keep the same height, g, the measured value of g should decrease to compensate for the increase in time. So g should be less than the actual value. Let's go on. The electromagnet is replaced so that the timer begins when the sphere is released. The student varies the distance h. The student measures and records the time delta t of the fall for its particular height, resulting in the following data table. Indicate below which quantities should be graphed to yield a straight line whose slope could be used to calculate the numerical value for g. Well, we know that h is 1 half g t squared, or g times 1 half t squared. So think of it as being y is equal to the slope times the x. So we can let our vertical axis be the height and the horizontal axis being one half times time squared. So let's do so. Vertical axis is going to be the height and the height is measured in meters. Height is measured in meters. And horizontal axis can be one half delta t squared and that should be measured in second squared. And what do we have to do? Use the remaining rows in the table above as needed to record any quantities that you indicated that are not given in the table. So let's fill it out. 1 half delta t squared in the second squared. And evaluating each of these, you should get 0 0.0055, 0 0.023, 0 0.058, 0.080 and 0 0.10. Okay, label each row you use and include units. Yes, we did. Let's go on to part C. Plot the data points for the quantities indicated in part B on the graph below. So we have to plot height and the horizontal axis. Clearly scale and label all the axes, including units if appropriate. So we have our 1 half t squared one of t squared and second squared for the horizontal axis. And we have our height meters for the vertical axis. And what do we have to do? We have to plot the points. So for the first one, 0 0.0055, 0 0.1. So 
before before we plot points actually let's make sure we label we labeled all the axes and scale it so that all of our data points are going to fit and we're going to use the majority of the graph so we're going from 0 0.0055 all the way to 0 0.1 and vertically we're going from 0 0.1 to 1 so let's label it something like this 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.6 0 0.8 1 so we can go all the way to 1 1.0 and horizontally we can go from 0 to 0 0.1 using using steps of 0 0.02 so we can go 0 0.02 0 0.04, 0 0.06, 0 0.08, and 0 0.10. Okay, now let's plot the point. And when you plot the point, you should get something very similar to this. 0 0.023, 0 0.2, uh, 0 0.058, 0 0.6, if I can plot these correctly, and 0 0.08, 0 0.8, and 0 0.1 and 1. So here is our plot. And we have to draw a straight line that best represents the data. So let's do so. We can draw the line something similar to this. Something, something very similar to this. So the best fit line that goes through. And what do we have to do? We have to Using the straight line, we have to calculate the experimental value of g, where g should be the slope of this line. So let's pick two points that seems to be on the line. So let's pick two points. I guess this one is pretty close, and we also see this point. So we have 0 0.02, 0 0.2, and 0 0.24, because you're going up by 0 0.4 each time. And for this point, you have 0 0.06, 0 0.64. So our slope, or the experimental value for g, is 0 0.64 minus 0 0.24 over 0 0.06 minus 0 0.02, which is 0 0.40 over 0 0.04, also known as 10 meters per second squared. So that's pretty close to the actual value of around 9.81. So we're, we should be pretty confident that our answer is good. Now let's go all the way up, all the way to the final part, part E. Another student fits the data t in the table to a quadratic equation. So instead of using linear regression, we're doing quadratic equation. The student's equation for the distance fallen y as a function of time is this, where a, b, and c are given. Vertically down is the positive direction. Using this student's equation above, do the following. I derive an equation for the velocity as a function of time. Well, we are given the position function, so velocity is simply differentiating this with respect to time, or 2at plus b, also known as a is 5.75, multiplied it by 2 gets us 11.5 meters per second squared t plus b, which is negative 0.524 meters per second. Now let's go to part 2. Calculate the new experimental value for g. Well, your dy dt, or the velocity function, dy dt, should be in the form gt plus vy0. So in our case, the g, g has to be 11.5 meters per second squared, just matching this up. This is gt plus V, why not? Initial velocity, and that's the and that's the acceleration due to gravity. Using 9.81 meters per second squared as the accepted value for g at this location, calculate the percent error for the value found in part E2. Percent error is calculated using the measured value minus the theoretical value. Theoretical value all divided by the theoretical value and make sure you take the absolute value for the value up top percent error should be positive times 100 percent so we want to do 11.5 minus theoretical is 9.81 over 9.81 times 100 percent plugging this in you should get 17.2 percent okay now let's go on to the final part part four 
Assuming the sphere is at a height of 1.40 at time of zero, calculate the velocity of the sphere just before it strikes the pad. So when the sphere strikes the pad, the, the vertical displacement, the uh, vertical distance moved, should be 1.40 meters. So we want this y to be 1.40 at the time, at the time of collision, at the time of collision, collision with the pad. So we want to say, we want to say 1.40 is equal to our equation 5.75t squared minus 0.524t plus 0.08. So we want 1.4 to be equal to be equal to the student's equation with a, b, and c given to us, and solving for time, solving for time by either graphing this or using a quadratic formula or using a numeric solver, you should get time of 0 0.527 seconds. And using this, we want to find we want to find the velocity just before it strikes the pad. We have the equation for the velocity. Our equation is right here. So we can just plug it in. So our velocity, our velocity is 11.5 times the time minus 0 0.524. We, if you calculate this, you should get 5.54 meters per second.